New Year, everyone. I'm Lead Night Sky Ranger Jeff. January is the month that's got cold, clear, and dark skies that come early. Mercury leads off the evening sky on the 1st, setting some 20 minutes after the sun, so you will need an excellent view. It shines at magnitude 1.1. By the 3rd, it drops to magnitude 2.2. After the 7th, it becomes a morning planet. Look for Mercury in the morning on the 19th at the horizon. By the 25th, it will be at 8 degrees above the horizon at 6.45 a.m. Venus is rising a tad higher this month at 9 degrees above the horizon, 20 minutes after sunset. At magnitude minus 3.9, it's hard to miss, though it is easily mistaken for an airplane when there is a lot of moisture for the sun rays to be refracted and it will blink red and green. It will be in Capricornus. On the 22nd, look for it and Saturn to be separated by only 21 arc seconds. That's pretty close in angular distance. By this time, you will have almost two hours to view the two planets together. On the 24th, it will slide into Aquarius. It will go from 96% lit to 91% lit through the month. This month we get a special treat looking at the moon. We get to see a part of it normally hidden. This is called a libration effect. We'll see an unusual 9% more of the moon due to its orbit. For instance, Tycho, the large southern crater with several rays of debris coming from it, will be closer to the equator than normal. Remember though that many telescopes flip what you see, especially prone to this are reflector telescopes. Most refractor telescopes have diagonals that flip the image back into correct view. Mars is still a sight to view. Its bright reddish-orange color makes it easy to spot way high in the sky at 70 degrees above the horizon. Near it will lie the Pleiades, the Seven Lazy Boys, or the Seven Sisters. It starts out 15 arc seconds and shrinks to 11 arc seconds by the end of the month and fades slightly to a minus 0.3 magnitude. Its shrinking size permits only viewing on the best of nights. Look for a night with a scene that is at least a 4, preferably a 5, which means clear and no atmospheric turbulence, and crank the power up. At this point, I don't show it to the public because the lack of good seeing and its shrinking size makes it too hard to resolve any details. The show is basically over for another 27 months or so. Jupiter shines at magnitude minus 2.4, dimming only slightly by the end of the month. It's in Pisces the fish, and it is 39 arc seconds wide at the beginning of the month, slimming to about 37 arc seconds by the end. Be sure to see if you can spot Io Shadow on the second between 7.45 and 8.40 p.m. There are several more transits. With luck, you will spot the moon and its shadow at the same time. Our asteroid of the month is Vesta, now flying through Aquarius. You'll need to view it on separate nights to confirm it has moved. If you photograph it, you only need an hour or so to notice its movement. Nearby to the east is 4 Juno, another asteroid. Saturn begins setting earlier and earlier. Early in the month, you will find it 20 degrees above the horizon at magnitude 0.8 in Capricornus. By mid-month, it will be 15 degrees above the horizon at the same time. By the end of the month, it will disappear at sunset. It will be in conjunction, that is, behind the sun next month. Uranus is now in Aries the Ram and is easy to spot as there aren't many other stars in its neighborhood. This turquoise planet sets around 1 a.m. At four arc seconds, it's too small to resolve detail for any but the most powerful telescopes. Glowing at magnitude 5.7, even binoculars can spot it. Neptune is located in eastern Aquarius. At magnitude 7.8, you will need a small telescope or good binoculars to spot its blue color. At the beginning of the month, it will be 30 degrees above the horizon at sunset and slowly decline over the course of the month. The quadranted meteor showers grace the evening skies of January from December 28th to, de to January 12th, peaking on the 3rd with an expected 110 meteors per hour. The quadranted constellation no longer exists, having been replaced by Northern Booties, the goat herder. He looks most like a kite. The moon, however, will be bright and full on the 6th, 
so likely many of the meteors will be washed out by its glow. The meteors are the result of Comet 96P mesh hole. Our constellation of the month is Orion the Hunter. This distinctive constellation is the home of a stellar nursery and a magnificent nebula rich in color M42. In dark skies this is easily viewable in a telescope. Here is your monthly orrery. Here is the list of events. So that's what's up in the sky for the month of January 2023. Go outside, brave the cold, and enjoy the night sky.